Hello and welcome to uh, another Cheeky Scientist Association webinar. Uh, very excited about our guest today. Uh, we have Dr. Karen Deek on, uh, who uh, earned her PhD in genetics from the University of Chicago and went on from there to join a pa uh, patent prosecution group. Yeah, Sonnenschein, Nath, and Ro Rosenthal. All right, she joined the firm as a patent scientist, passed the patent bar, and became a patent agent. Her practice included work with all stages of the patent life cycle uh, for biotech clients and included work on medical diagnostic tests, agricultural products, pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and industrial products. So for those of you listening, uh, this is very pertinent to all of the different industries you're trying to get into. She's, she's also performed patent ability, which I didn't even know was a word uh, until today, patent ability, due diligence, and freedom to operate analyses. Uh, she's actively participated in the drafting and prosecution of both U.S. and international patent applications. So uh, we have a lot of international people on as well. Uh, so yeah, so, so, so Dr. Dr. Deke has a lot of experience. Um, she, she has been at the University of Notre Dame since 2011, uh, where, where she was recruited to create and then become the inaugural director of the, of the MS in patent law. Uh, it's a one-year program uh, designed to prepare students for successful practice as patent agents. Uh, so, so a lot of uh, a lot of experience in in, in patent law and, and everything related to it. And we're really excited to have you on today, uh, Karen. Thank you for making time to be with us. Sure. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, you've 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 done so much, and you've been so active. I know it. it uh, you're you're also an informal consultant at, at Notre Dame at the Office of Technology Transfer, which is really really exciting for for us because we have a lot of people interested in going into this industry in particular. Um, so I guess you've you've transver you know transversed a lot of different borders. Uh, you've you've had a, a flourishing career. You came, and you came from uh, getting a PhD in genetics, so you're able to relate to you know all the PhDs we have listening. Uh, to start, maybe you can just describe a little bit of what the life of a patent agent looks like, because we have a lot of people who are interested in, in patent law and things related to it, but uh, most of us don't understand exactly what that entails. Sure, and I think actually it probably would be best if I started with telling you what a patent agent even is, what that title means. Yes. Um, so you may have heard of a patent attorney. That would be someone who's an attorney who has also, uh, is also allowed to help people get patents. A patent agent is not an attorney, but maybe, for instance, someone like myself who has a PhD or an advanced degree or even just a general background in the science or technological field who has taken the patent office's bar exam and can represent clients. So it's a distinction between I am not an attorney, I am a patent agent. So mm -hmm. I can't do all the other attorney stuff like write wills and go to traffic court and all that stuff. That would drive me up the wall anyway. But I can still do the interesting stuff, you know, and actually help people with their technological problems and, and help them get patents for their inventions, which are technologically based. Perfect. So a day in the life then is, is very much like, is very similar between a patent attorney and a patent agent, I would say. Um, at a large firm, you're, you're working with clients, you're helping clients solve problems. And, you know, either for a patent attorney or an agent, it's very much focused on they need a patent or they think they want a patent and helping them figure out if they do, and if so, how to go about doing that. No, thanks. Yeah, and that's, that's one thing we always like to ask. Okay, so you described some of the differences um, between patent agent and patent attorney. What, but what does it, I mean, very, very just super practically, because we're talking to, you know, PhDs, and we like to break down everything, uh, you know, versus, <laughs> I mean, versus academia, like what does your, your daily life look like? I mean, you, you know, you get up going to an office, you're, uh, you're spending most of your day writing. Maybe you can kind of compare and contrast it or just talk about uh, very practically uh, what, what your days look like, or, or I guess yeah, an average like, day. Yeah, well, there, you know, as with most jobs, there's no such thing as an average day. But one thing that's very different from a, a life in the lab is that I'm not doing experiments anymore. Um, my own career in my PhD, I did so much PCR, and I'm very happy never to have to do that again. Um, I, I'm not going to ever touch a pipette man, which is just fine with me. Um, but I still do think about kind of capital S science. So I'm not doing the, you know, the experiments in triplicate. Like I'm not doing that anymore. But I see the mm -hmm. stuff now that works. This this whole set of experiments has worked, and there's a story and an interesting result that can actually be used by somebody. And so that's kind of where someone in this role steps in. And either as a patent attorney or agent, you know, you have kind of several buckets 
you know, standard things that you do, although in what order and how often you're doing each of them is going to vary person to person. Um, one of those things is working with inventors. So somebody has gotten their experiments to work and has a cool result and an interesting idea. So you're going to talk to the inventor about what they have done and actually get to learn some science. I mean, in some sense, this job is having industry experts or academic superstars teach you about what they do, just mm. you, not a whole classroom, and not like fundamental science, but here is my newest, coolest thing. I'm going to tell you everything about it. How can you beat that, right? Learning from mm. the expert on whatever thing every day. No, that's great. So you work, so it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one work? In that role, group. yes. Okay. And then once you kind of meet with the inventor, your next step is probably going to be to do a patentability search. That is a real word. Um, and <laughs> that is when you actually look through all the literature, both uh, the, you know, the PubMed and Medline stuff, as well as all the patents from everywhere around the world to figure out whether what they have done is actually completely new or whether they just didn't find the right thing. So, for instance, I know plenty of cases in which people, there was never, for instance, a chemical that was synthesized, never published in a journal, like a, a scientific journal, but it had been patented for 40 years. Wow. So you can't get a patent on that just because you didn't know about it. Um, so that's kind of very important for you to know before you go into the process of applying for a patent. Okay, so yeah, so maybe we could talk about it from the, the scientist's point of view. So they, ha they want to apply for a patent. They come into, mm -hmm. what do they do first? They come to you first or how, how does the complete workflow work? Well, if you're, if you're at a university, let's, let's talk about that. If you're a professor at a university, usually there is a tech transfer office or a technology commercialization office or something like that on campus. And you mentioned some of your listeners would be familiar with that. So the first thing the academic researcher is going to do is go to the professionals in that office, and they're probably going to do at least a preliminary search on whatever it is that the inventor, the professor is bringing to them is something that they might be interested in. And then from okay. – so, from there, then it would move to either an outside law firm or to a patent attorney or agent in that office, depending on how the university is structured, okay. to do a more thorough search and actually write a patent application for it. Okay, and that's and that would be where you come in. Right. Well, you know, like you said in the intro, I do a little bit of consulting, if you want to call it, for sure. our tech transfer office. So even at Notre Dame, I do that sort of in-house. So you're working, so it's kind of a role where you're working with, you get to work with the, I mean, the scientists, you know, the academics, the, the people, the tech transfer, the, the attorneys themselves. And it, it, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I mean, you're working with sort of a variety of people in the pipeline between the inventor who's created the thing, the, if it's going to, you know, the thing is actually going to be a product, like you're, you want to know what that product is going to be. So you're going to be working with the business people so that you can protect it appropriately for the thing that you're actually going to sell. So you get kind of, a broader, a much higher level, broader, uh, yet not being ungranular either view of what science is. You, you sort of see it in a context that's much different than you would see it in in a lab just working on the actual experiment. No, I think that's great. Um, uh, we, we've we've had, a, for those of you listening, we've had you know other people come on, whether they're scientific editors, publishing editors, uh, you know, uh, and so seeing the other side of the science uh, is is pretty intriguing. And in this case, you're seeing the other side of of taking that science and, you know, getting it patented, um, you know, from a patent agent's point of view. So uh, I think the important thing to point out here is you still get to stay very close to the science. Like you said, you still get to be pretty granular, but you also get to look at a lot of different projects and, and some really uh, cutting edge projects, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And that's for me really the, the best part of it. I don't, I don't actually have to do the work, but I get to see the cool results of the experiments that do work, mm. not just in my lab, I get to see everybody's lab, you know, I get to right. see all the stuff that I'm interested in and everything's different and unique and I learn different kinds of science than I ever did when I was in the middle of my PhD. 